Shalom, shalom. Good morning. Today's Tuesday, September 21st. Um, and I have a very, very busy day today. Uh, a lot of things that I need to get accomplished. How many is going to get accomplished? I don't know. First on the docket is to go get my mother-in-law's clothes and uh, get them washed for her. So another docket is, this is a beautiful um, pizza sauce. I mean, it just tastes wonderful. Let's see if I can get it in camera. It just tastes wonderful. And this was a little rebel. It did not seal. It had some siphon out and the pressure came in. Am I a rebel without a cause? Stay tuned to find out. Um, and I, I got to thinking, I seem, I must seem to you like a really uh, rebellious person. But, uh, in, but both in the garden and with canning, but that's not really the case. The reason that I rebel in the garden is because <clears throat> if you don't give me a good reason for not doing something um, and tell me why, then I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. <laughs> um, for the kitchen, um, as far as canning goes, um, here's my problem. I, I do a lot of things that are not approved methods and you do what you need to do. I'm doing what I want to do. So, but here's my thing and here's why I seem a little rebellious when it comes to that. If Hershey's can bottle chocolate syrup in a bottle, plastic bottle with a little seal around the top and that's it. No pressure canning, no water bath canning, and it's safe to sit on the shelf for years. But yeah, we're supposed to believe that our um, home canned chocolate sauce or, excuse me, chocolate syrup is not going to be safe on the shelves. Really? See, it's things like this that are, and my rebel is... Um, <clears throat> My rebelliousness in the kitchen is based on things that are illogical. It's not logical that Hershey's can can or bottle in plastic with just a little seal around the top and be perfectly safe for human consumption for years, but something that is canned in a jar like this, water bath, whatever, is not safe for consumption. Have you ever thought about that? I call BS. It's just, it's, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's not logical. And um, we already know the USDA does not really have our best interests at heart, but um, whoever fattens the wallet, right? So, uh, you know, another thing I come across, well, lentils, there's no safe preservation method for lentils. Um, it's a legume. It's the same thing as a bean. If beans can be canned safely, so can legumes. Uh, legumes will not take as long because legumes are smaller. <clears throat> so it won't take as long for the heat to reach the center. So um, I just realized you're crooked. So while I seem like a little bit of a rebel in the kitchen, and, and I am, it's because the things that we're told do not make sense. That, you know, two and two no longer equals four in today's society, am I right? Um, you have so, such nonsense, things that our grandparents used to do and nobody died, um, but yet it's unsafe for us to, to, to do today. Um, I'm seeing so many things that make it look like uh, we are being discouraged from doing home preservation. Now, we know that the, pharma, the, the pharmacology has their, uh, um, their board members on the major, uh, on the, the boards uh, of the major colleges. So they have their input, particularly medical colleges. So they have their input on what gets taught in the schools. So, and uh, they also have their input on what gets funded, what research gets funded. And very often, um, one of the things that, that I learned from college was to be a critical thinker and to look at the different, um, to say there's a study 
look at the study. What are they studying? But uh, the first thing you check is who sponsored the study? Because many times you'll see the results are skewed to look favorably upon whoever funded the study. And even if you actually look at the real data and it is not favorable to the industry that funded the study, they will put a spin on it to make it look like it is. So, you know, one of the main things that we need to be um, as consumers is to be informed, um, to think critically, not believe everything we're told, but investigate. And I'm not saying just, you know, don't even believe me. Look out for yourself. Look up the information yourself. That's what I've done. And so the things that I look like I'm being rebellious on in the kitchen is just because it's been done for hundreds of years. Okay. Hundreds of years. People have been canning for since, you know, what, uh, early to mid 1800s, hundreds of years, people have been preserving food. And even before that, you have um, the fermentation process. And uh, wine was bottled in, in, um, in skins and in glass bottles and things like that. So, um, yeah, I don't buy all of the information that comes out um, just because it doesn't make sense. So, um, and you know, you can buy lentils, just going back to lentils, you can buy lentils that have been, <clears throat> excuse me, not, not um, pushing this particular brand because we're trying to get away from the, from the tin cans aluminum cans, whatever they're made of, <laughs> um, and going to glass. But if they can put lentils in these and seal it with glue, um, tell me again why it's not safe to, and these are not water processed. These are not pressure cans, okay? <laughs> but it's safe for human consumption. Go look at how these are made. If you can find it, go look at how these are made. Um, but it's safe for human consumption for years. Let's see what the ex expiration date is on this one. And granted, we've had this on the shelf for about a year. Oh. Uh, best by December 2022. So this has been on our shelf for over a year and it's still good for a year and a half, uh, almost a half. Best buy. Best buy is different than use by date. Best Buy means it's going to taste better if you use it by this date. But use by date is um, you've got to use it by this date or toss it out. So if lentils can be canned in this, why can't they be canned in this? Um, so, you know, I just wanted to clear that out. I'm not just being a rebellious person just for the heck of it, just for the fun of it. Um, I rebel when things don't make sense, when things are illogical and when I do my own research and my own research says this has been for years, for years, centuries, a safe method, method of preserving food. While we're at it, let's talk about, um, let's talk about fermentation. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard certain people say fermentation is rotten food. You're not supposed to eat food that's fermented. How do you think people preserve food before they had these <laughs> and way before they had these? They fermented the foods. That's how they preserved them to last throughout the winter so that by the time spring and summer harvest came, they had food to feed their families. They would ferment. And you can still ferment today. And as long as you keep it in a cool place, it will last for months and months and months. <clears throat> we love ferments. Um, we have a lot of fermented drinks. Um, I fermented kvass. I fermented um, sauerkraut, kimchi, um, just regular vegetables, cauliflower, carrots, beans, um, you can ferment anything. Basically, it's just um, a natural pickling process. It is not rotten food. Rotten food, you can toss it out and only the worst, um, like the lowest grade animals, like mice, will eat it. 
because they're not discriminative. However, I can tell you the ones that have the the, food, the fruits that we get off the vine that have um, blossom in rat, it's fungus, we toss it out. Guess what eats it? Absolutely nothing. They don't get eaten. They just sit there and continue to rot and decompose until it's gone. But they do not get eaten. So what does that tell you about eating foods with um, spots and blemishes and stuff? I know a lot of people say, well, if the, the bugs don't eat it, then we shouldn't either. Um, well, that's true for bugs. Um, I still, you know, there's uh, there are parasites that can be passed along through slug, slug um, secretions. Uh, so, yeah, I don't... Um, we don't I don't feed that to my family I mean you may that's that's your choice but I don't uh, but back to the fermenting I've heard people say that is rotting food it can rot in there if it does not have a good um, uh, a strong fermentation it can rot but if you do things right then you're gonna have a wonderful fermentation that is not rotted um, so anybody who says that they're just speaking in ignorance um, and ignorance just means that you don't know something but you know they try to speak with authority thinking that they do um, so <laughs> um, yeah. so fermented food is not rotten food unless it has rotted in the jar but to classify all fermented food as rotted food is just nonsense but it's things like this that get perpetuated that that make people scared to try to ferment their own food and that's um i wonder if that's not the way it's designed <laughs> what it was designed for um but if something is rotten you can smell it uh the f smell of food rotting is um very putrid you will smell it if it's rotten it's a completely different smell than the sour smell of vinegar. That is what it becomes in the um, in the fermentation. So, people say they experts say that you can't can something because it's not acidic enough. Okay, mm -hmm. but what they're talking about is a syrup that is part water or part other liquid juice and one part sugar it's one to one ratio so sugar is also a preservative doesn't have to have acid okay uh, you can can peaches you can can um, all kinds of things without it having to in a water bath without it having to add citric acid okay uh, peaches are not an acidic fruit um, so I just wanted to add that in I just wanted to share that <clears throat> Yeah, so, you know, you have to do what you feel is right and safe for your own family. And um, if I remember, I'll, I will put in the video, uh, this is not an approved, approved <laughs> candy method. Um, but, uh, oh, the, the reason they give for, the reason they give for chocolate sauce not being um, approved for canning is because it's a low acid food. Can you think of any other low acid foods that get canned? Yeah, I can think of quite a few. <clears throat> and the reason they give for the lentils is that no, um, no experimentation has been done to find a safe um, pressure canning um, recipe for it. So, yeah. Um, so my advice to you is you do what you feel is right for your yourself and your family what you feel safe doing if you don't feel safe cleaning things that are not officially approved by whatever entity is the one that does the approving then don't do it if you feel safe that this is how your grandparents did it your great-grandparents preserved food your great-great-grandparents then uh, give it a try. I mean, if food goes bad, you can smell it. You'll see mold. You will see even botulism can be seen um, 
if it's left long enough in a drawer. That is all I wanted to share today. Um, thank you for joining me. I appreciate that you took your time to um, sit down and listen to me uh, spout <laughs> and spew my uh, aggravation with, <laughs> with the way things are done today. Um, I, I really appreciate your time. I know how uh, how many things are vying for your attention, and I do appreciate that you spent the time with your time with me. So. So, am I a rebel without a cause? No. I only rebel when I have a cause to rebel. May we all be a rebel with a cause. Yahweh bless you and keep you and give you shalom. Until next time, Yah bless.